Hello everyone and welcome back to the Kohi Game Engine series. Today we are going to be wrapping up our work with free lists and allocators. Okay, so before we jump into any of that, I want to really quickly thank the partners of the channel, which is the highest tier of membership, as well as the highest tier on Patreon. So our partners are Aarslia, Wenshang, Kaden, Joel, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Anaudi. Thank you guys so much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. Uh, I also want to give a big thanks to all the other folks here that are listed on the screen at the moment. The support from you guys means a lot to me and helps me grow this channel and be able to make investments into the channel. So at least for right now, we want to go ahead and wrap up all this work that we've been doing with our free lists and our allocators by taking a look at the Vulcan buffer. And so, uh, what we're going to do here is we are going to make some adjustments to our Vulcan buffer to make it use our newly created free list. And this will allow our Vulcan buffer to be much more flexible and handle uh, allocations and deallocations in a much more dynamic way, as opposed to just doing it in a linear fashion where we can't load and unload things, right? So this actually shouldn't take too, too long, uh, only because this is a relatively simple set of changes. So let's go ahead and jump into it. The first set of changes that we're going to have is in Vulcan Types INL, and we're looking at the diff here. And uh, the first thing that we've done is we've added a reference to our free list H. And within our Vulcan buffer structure, we've added a few things here, uh, something to hold our memory requirement, uh, a pointer to hold our free list block and a free list uh, itself, right? And so this is all the uh, modifications we have to make to that structure. So we've also made a couple of small changes to the Vulcan geometry data. Uh, this was a U32 for the vertex buffer offset and index buffer offset. They are now U64s since that's what our free lists work with, okay? So we've also made one more change to the Vulcan context. So if we scroll down a little bit here, we have removed the geometry vertex offset and the geometry index offset, right? Because these were sort of where we were emulating a linear allocator and just moving this offset every time we loaded data, right? Uh, we don't need those anymore and we can get rid of these uh, free list to do's because we're gonna be addressing that now, right? So we've removed those, we don't need them anymore. So before we move on, uh, I want to mention another change that I made to the free list itself. And this is the ability to resize it. And this isn't something we're gonna use right off the bat, but it is something that we're eventually going to need whenever we resize a Vulcan buffer. So there is the possibility that a Vulcan buffer can be resized. And if that's using a free list, we need to be able to resize the free list. But we have a couple of requirements we're gonna put in place for that. So uh, I've added this new free list resize. And basically whenever we resize, what we're gonna do is we are going to create a new memory block uh, within the free list. We are going to set that up depending on what the new size is. And we are going to provide a uh, an outward facing pointer uh, of the old memory block, block to be freed, right? So we'll set up a new memory block, copy over the data of all the allocations to the new memory block from the old, and then output the old memory block to be freed. And uh, that will essentially create our larger free list. And what we'll wind up with is a block of free memory at the very end of the list, which may or may not be merged with uh, other parts of the list that are adjacent to it if there is free memory adjacent to it, right? So that is basically what this free list resize function does. Um, I've left quite a bit of comments in here in terms of how that works. And if we just examine the C file, uh, this is the implementation of that, right? So uh, I've provided a pretty high level overview of this. So I'm actually not going to go over this in detail. Most of what is here, we've already seen in other places in code. So I don't really feel the need to step through this uh, line by line. I've commented it as well. So I encourage you to have a look through that just to see how that works, right? So uh, with that, uh, that is all the changes that uh, we need for the free list. So now the next set of changes comes from our Vulcan buffer. 
So the Vulcan buffer uh, also has a couple of new methods added to it. So we have a Vulcan buffer allocate and a Vulcan buffer free. And these basically just pass through directly to our internal free list and uh, allocate or free the memory range as provided. The Vulcan buffer allocates, I want to call to attention that it provides a out offset pointer. Uh, and this will be the offset that is returned from the free list, uh, indicating where that allocation actually is within that free list. Okay. And so the way that this Vulcan buffer will work is all of them will have a free list. Uh, we can load memory into it exactly as we've done up to this point. If we just want to load memory into the, the whole thing all at once, or we already know a specific section of memory that we want to load into, we can always call this load data. But if we want to track allocations within one of these buffers, we would need to use this allocate first and then load, right? Uh, and likewise, if we were to go ahead and free, we would have also had to have allocated first, right? So this uh, set of changes is fully backwards compatible with everything we've done up to this point. You can continue to use the buffer that way. And in fact, there are going to be a few uh, sections of code that use it that way. Uh, but uh, in order to keep things a little bit more dynamic, uh, we have this new functionality that was added as well. So really quickly, if we pop into the C file here uh, for Vulcan buffer, we have a few changes in here. I'm going to go over the new methods first, and then uh, we'll go into some of the uh, creation. Okay. So the first thing that we have here is our Vulcan buffer allocates, which all it does is performs a quick sanity check on uh, the buffer size and out offset just to make sure that they are all there. And then it just returns the result of the free list allocate block, right? And the free basically just does the exact same thing just in reverse, right? It calls free list free block. So that's pretty straightforward. The next thing is, uh, and actually before I go into this resize, I want to go ahead and jump into the create, right? Because it probably makes sense for us to look at that first. So uh, as opposed to creating the, uh, the Vulcan resources first, we actually go ahead and we create the free list resources first, okay? And so uh, what this does is it calls at once to figure out what the memory requirement is, and then uh, allocates a free list block using our K allocate, which if you recall, uses our dynamic allocator under the hood. And then uh, we call free list create again, uh, this time passing it our allocated block and uh, a pointer to the free list to be held there. Okay, so that is just creating it. The other thing that we've added is you'll see these uh, few calls to clean up free list. That's because there's a few places where this can happen. Clean up free list simply calls destroy for the free list, freeze the memory block, and then goes ahead and zeroes out the memory requirement and the block itself. Okay. And uh, that is going to be called in failure cases within uh, this create method, right? So uh, here, if we fail to get the memory requirements for the Vulcan buffer, we go ahead and clean up the free list just to not leak that memory, right? Uh, we also do the same thing here. If uh, you know we fail to allocate memory, we go ahead and clean that up. And then, of course, in our destroy, the first thing that we do is we clean up the free list there as well, okay? So uh, resize basically just adds the free list logic into the uh, buffers resize. So the first thing that we do is we do a sanity check to make sure that the new size uh, is greater than or equal to uh, the total size. Technically speaking, it should always be greater than. But uh, in this case, we really just want to prevent uh, any resize from going to a smaller buffer, right? Because uh, if you were to resize to a smaller buffer and you had things allocated that are now outside the range of that buffer, you'd wind up with invalid memory and things like that. And we definitely don't want that. Okay. So uh, in this case, um, we only accept a resize if the resize is greater than or equal to um, the current size of the buffer. Right. So uh, we first resize the free list. So the first thing that we do is get the memory requirement for that. We allocate it. Right. And then we go ahead and we call uh, free list resize, passing uh, this old block here to be set um, by the output parameter here. And you'll notice that we pass the address of old block because this is a double void pointer uh, that is taken 
by free list resize, okay? And that um, sets this to be the old block of memory, right? And if for some reason that fails, we go ahead and we just free the new block of memory uh, and return false. Uh, and then of course, error, um, you know, warn about that. And then uh, we clean up the old memory here. So we just call free against the old block of memory. And then we update the free list memory requirement, free list block, and the total size to the new versions of those things. And then we just proceed as normal, okay? So uh, there's not a whole heck of a lot of logic that's been added to this. Um, it's just, it's all around the free list logic, okay? So with all those changes, we now have to make some changes in the back end, which is actually uh, not very many changes at all. Thankfully, uh, because of the way that we wrote this, uh, the changes here are pretty simple. Most of them are actually uh, in the upload data range function itself. So uh, the first thing that we did was we changed this to return a Boolean to indicate success or failure because we can potentially fail um, on an allocation call. And so uh, what we do is we uh, return true on success, false on failure. And then we also changed uh, this offset to now be a pointer to out offset so that uh, anything that calls the upload data range can uh, is provided with an offset as opposed to providing the offset to upload to that range, okay? And so the first thing that we do here is we say uh, we allocate some space in the buffer uh, we check to make sure that that's correct. If not, we return false. Otherwise, uh, we go ahead and uh, modify our call to Vulkan buffer copy two, and we dereference the out offset because we actually want to use the value of that, not the pointer to it. And then uh, we return true in that case, okay? Okay, so that is upload data range. One more thing uh, is the free data range now actually does something. So this used to be uh, just a couple of to-dos to say free this in the buffer and update the free list with this range being free. Before that wasn't doing anything, now it actually does. So uh, if we were past a buffer, we just call Vulcan buffer free, passing through the buffer size and the offset. Okay, so this is actually properly hooked up now. And if you recall, we actually scaffolded all of this out. So all we had to do was come in here and uh, update this. There's no interface changes that need to be made for that. All the way down here, we have a couple of changes where lines of code were removed. So uh, in our create buffers, our private function here, uh, we were going ahead and uh, setting the geometry vertex offset and geometry index offset to zero. We are no longer doing that because those properties no longer exist. So those lines could be removed. And then if we scroll down uh, a little bit further to Vulkan renderer create geometry, we actually need to change the way that this is uploaded as well. So uh, we also removed the line here for setting the vertex buffer offset. If you recall, uh, that would take the context geometry vertex offset and um, apply that. And we no longer need to do that. So instead of that, uh, what we do now is we've wrapped this if statement here in a check because now this returns a Boolean uh, so that we can now say uh, if this fails for some reason, we can actually bleat about it and return false, um, which is a much better way of handling this than we were handling before. Before we could not actually detect a failure here, right? So this has always been returning a Boolean now this is a little bit, um, this is actually doing this properly, okay? Uh, we also change this internal data vertex buffer offset. Instead of setting it up here like we were doing, we now just pass the address of that and it's set by this function, okay? So if that's successful, it goes ahead and repeats that same logic for the index buffer. And that is really it, right? And so um, if we go ahead and do a clean and a build, And we'll go ahead and run. And there we are. So we are running using our new free lists in our Vulkan buffer. And so what this is gonna do is this is gonna open the door for us to 
create a sort of interface to a buffer where we can use that buffer from anywhere in the renderer and not have to worry about the Vulkan specifics of it, right? Uh, and that's something that we're going to probably reserve for a future video, uh, although not too great in the future. But one of the first places we're actually going to need that is to start creating UI controls, especially when we're talking about rendering text, right? Because the amount of data that we're going to have to store for rendering text is going to vary uh, per control because all of those strings could be different sizes, right? And so we're going to need a dynamic way to be able to upload data and free data out of buffers in a, in a very dynamic way. And this is going to sort of pave the way for that to be done. So with that said, uh, this is a very short video today. I wanted to keep it this way uh, because we've had a lot of long videos lately. And uh, this is sort of the style that I want to stick with going forward. So all of the details uh, are going to be in the repo for you guys to go ahead and examine if you want to see the full-blown code there. The change will be uh, posted to that sometime shortly after this video is released. With all that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Please toss the video a thumbs up. If you haven't already, consider subscribing. Click the little bell icon there to get notified as to when videos in this or other series drops, and I will see you guys next time.